If you would turn in the book of Ephesians 3 and 14, I'd like to read uh, just a few scriptures, and I do thank you for uh, being in the house of the Lord, and I'm thankful the Lord has allowed us to, uh, a, a beautiful night to, to come and, and to worship the Lord, and I pray the next few days be beautiful, and uh, 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 we, if we just make it through April, you know, they keep saying that's our worst month for storms, but we have them all the time, but uh, anyway... Uh, we just are praying for everybody and praying for strength tonight. And I'd like to continue our series on uh, Pray Without Ceasing. And uh, Ephesians 3, and we'll begin with verse 14. Everybody has that. Say, praise the Lord. And let's read, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to, to the riches, everybody say riches, of his glory, not the world's, but his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Now, if you come tonight to get strengthened uh, any other way in the physical, I don't know if we can really help you out, but in the inner, there is a strength that God can give you, but that strength in the inner can help the outer. And so, strengthened with might by his spirit, uh, in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love. Everybody say love. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye be filled with all, everybody say all, the fullness of God. I'd like to just continue our series tonight, but my uh, title tonight is God Size Prayers. God Size Prayers. Could you say, God bless the word? Give the Lord another hand clap. Amen. Amen. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. What is a God Size Prayer? Is it is a small prayer any different? Is a is a t five minute prayer any different? Uh, than a 30-minute prayer? Well, it's just the length. It depends on the depth of the heart. Somebody could pray five minutes in the Spirit with somebody that prayed 30 minutes maybe didn't get in the Spirit, and I'll take the five minutes any day. Whatever God says, the God I'm talking about, you don't make God any, big, you, you don't make God any bigger than He is. He's already great. Now you you make thing you make your life and your heart and your your life you you make it available and make it open up places bigger to allow him to come in. I, I thought about any of you ever how many people's ever uh, uh, eat at Foxes over here across the road? I guess tonight's sermon's being brought to you by Foxes. I guess I don't know, but anybody eat at Foxes over here? A few people. Have you ever got the big pizza, the large pizza, and? Uh, we, we, we'll pull in the window, and, and, and the girl, she'll, she'll like, they had a new girl the other day, and she was like, and she finally, she turned it sideways and stuck it through the window. And I said, you need a, a bigger window there for your pizzas. And she said, everybody says that. And I thought about God and our walk with him. We need to expand the window, the door. God is so big, He's already big, He wants to come in our lives, but we live that, we have that little bitty uh, opening right there, and if you kids watch uh, the, the uh, Aladdin, you know, what was he say, little bitty living space, we, we have that little bitty door, and we want this great big God to come through it, and He can, He's omnipotent, but that's not the way He works. The Bible says that his train filled the temple. You ever seen the big, the train, the, 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 uh, like when a, a, a bride starts to come down the aisle and, and it, he, he wants to fill the temple. And, but we, we, we have that little bit of living space. And you say, Brother David, how do I open that up to where he can come in? Well, you got to move some things out. You got to expand, you got to open the door. How do you open the door? You've got to clear your mind. You've got to open your understanding to receive what God has for you. God has everything. You know, God has a truckload of blessings. God has a truckload of, 
a healing. God has a truckload of, of everything that he wants to give you, but uh, you got to have a heart that's willing. It's the obedient that eats of the lamb. And so we, we sometimes can have these uh, God-sized prayers and we don't get the answers we want because we don't think maybe we're praying long enough, or we're praying this. Look, that man I told him today, he was already talking, he was telling me about how bad he was, and he said, I'm not this, and I'm not that, and, you know, I, but, but I am, a, I, I'll pray, you know. Hey, look, that's a start right there. Somebody, I'll take that any day than, than somebody that don't and, 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 and will push aside, well, I, I'm not going to pray, you know. He, at least he had an humble spirit and an attitude of, I want to. And I tell you what, you know, his daughter brought him down a notch to where I need to pray, you know. And so don't God sometimes put us in situations where we have to pray? And it's not that we don't want to pray, but sometimes God puts us in places where I need to pray and I have to because this is important. Well, God is important. And so one of my favorite subjects, you know, and that's why I teach the subject, is reading. I've always enjoyed reading. Uh, in grade school, I loved reading. Uh, I loved, I would try to finish my homework or finish early so that I could read. And uh, it's always been a favorite pastime. Uh, I love to read, and it just came easy for me where other people's like, I hate reading. I don't like reading. You know, I don't want to read. And, and, I, I, I wanted to, to teach reading because I loved it. Um, uh, if you love something, you'll go out of your way to do, do something to, to do that which you love. Uh, I believe you came tonight because you love God. Um, I, if you love something to the fullest, you have a passion. Um, I think we come to service in our worship and our giving and our praise to open that door a little wider so that God can come in. See, the devil, while you're opening it up, he's trying to close it up. And uh, if you, you got to have a desire. Now, can you think of something in, in, your, uh, in your mind that comes to you that you just desire? Something you enjoy doing, that you just have a desire. Nobody has to beg and plead you to do it. It's something you enjoy doing doing and so you got to have that same desire for God when you have a passion like you do for things of this world then there, there that is that is improvement that opens the door uh, for God and there's a great God that wants to come through that door in your life and so if you really want to receive something from God you go out of your way to receive it uh, the first thing that I've noticed people, what they do is when they come to the Lord, they quickly want to experience uh, the things of God. Uh, people want answered prayers. They don't get answered prayers, and uh, God begins to convict them. Well, maybe there's sin. Maybe there's something wrong in my life. And that's not always the case. That's even a person living for God. Uh, Sometimes the devil will try to say, well, you're doing something wrong. That's why God's not answering your prayers. That's not true. That's a lie from the enemy. He's just trying to discourage you. God works on every person and every individual. And so uh, God hears your prayers. Uh, I want to tell you this tonight. The Bible speaks of this. When you pray, you may get up and say, well, you know, I don't know uh, when I'll get an answer or if I get an answer. I've been praying for this. How many can raise your hand tonight for something you've been praying for a long time and it hasn't been answered? Raise your hand if you've got something now that you've been praying for and it hasn't been answered. Look at there. You don't quit praying. You just keep what God is doing. Is He's saying, I got this. Uh, I, I got it for you. Just come get it. And what you're doing is you're going after it. And so what you do to receive that you do everything you can to please God. Uh, I had a little girl today. She's a seventh grader. She was coming down the hall, and she had a little bag. And I said, is that your lunch? It was a little tiny bag, you know. And she said, no, this is a treat for the teacher. And said, I'm hoping to get on a row, you know. And she just kind of laughed. And, and I, I kind of looked at her, you know, and I thought about it. You know, she's doing every, everything she can 
to, to, to make the teacher, you know, uh, like her more and help her out a little bit. Well, it's kind of like that with God. I'm trying to reach him. Now, we don't try to get a treat or blessing from God just by doing the... I, I, I don't come on Wednesday nights just so I can get a blessing. That's not why I live for God. I, I don't come to the house of the Lord and worship God just because, well, better do this because, you know, God probably won't answer my prayer. I do it because I love the Lord. And it just comes with loving God that he loves me back. And we're his children. Don't you want to do things for your children? Don't you want to do things for them, help them out? And so uh, you do what you can to get God's attention. And to re- And so, God, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to give. I'm going to, I'm going to read your word. And when you do that, that gets a hold of God. And you pray. Now, people get discouraged. You can't get discouraged. Even if you've been praying a long time, you have to keep uh, seeking the Lord. Uh, uh, the Bible talks about seek. Di- the, he, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And so when you constantly seek Him, you don't just play hide and go seek and say, where are you at? You, and you, you open your eyes and say, I can't find Him. I quit. Let's play something else. That's not the way you play. You're going to go after You're going to look everywhere. You're going you're gonna to turn over boxes. You're going you're gonna to move cans out of the way. You're going to look behind doors. Everywhere that you can find that person hiding. God doesn't hide. He's there, but you got to get to him. you got to find where he's at. He, he, he's not going to dwell. And I used to think about unclean temple. I thought about all the bad things in my life. But you're not going to find him at the bar. You're not going to find him where there's people cursing and fighting and bickering and doing all manners of things. Where are you going to look for the Lord? Where's the first place people are going to go when they need something for God? They're going to go to the house of God. Because they just assume, oh, that's church. That's where he's at. He's omnipotent. He's everywhere. That's true. But he's not going to dwell in an unclean temple. you got to have some kind of life that you're living that's acceptable and holy. Hey, go back at the Old Testament. Everything they had to do just to stand before God and the priest to ask something. Man, if we had to do all that, we, we're, been, we're in some serious trouble. None of us are going to make it, you know. But thank God he died for our sins and he died on the cross. He was the ultimate sacrifice. I've told you many times, thank the Lord, I don't have to go get a lamb or a goat. You know, I'd be in some trouble, you know. Uh, I'd be in some serious trouble. And so, uh, but, but we, we reach for God. You do what it takes. That's why people, when they're needing something from God, that they'll do all kinds of things. They'll move up in the Lord. They'll do things that the pastor don't have to tell them or preach to them about. Conviction sets in. The Bible that they had to listen to or maybe paid attention to, all of a sudden, oh, I see that now because they need something. And, and, and so they're, they're going to apologize. They're going to they're do something that they should have done. Or they're going to do some things to get what it is that they're trying to get from God. And so that's a good thing. Those are those God-sized prayers. That's where you size them up and you get to where God is at. Amen. Would you give the Lord a praise? Amen. Praise the Lord. You put it first. You put God first. Seek Him and seek the things of God first. If it is something you love and you have a passion, you'll always put it in the forefront, right? You're going to put it in the forefront. It's always going to be there. Uh, I, I was watching a, a documentary, and there was this man talking about World War II, and they was flying these planes, and, and they showed cockpits and everything. And in the, uh, in the cockpit, they had a picture of a wife and maybe a one of their children or something like that, they're flying in the cockpit in war, and there's that little picture, just a reminder of somebody they love. They have them right there because that's somebody they love. In the Army, they used to, they, they'd have little pictures and stuff, and they'd lay there at night and just stare at that picture. They put them right there with them. That, that was their heartbeat. That was their love. That's where God needs to be. They say important things are on people's refrigerators, reminders, important things, pictures. You go and you look at families and stuff. We go to Granny's, and I'm like, Granny, are you ever going to, am I ever going to grow up on your refrigerator? She's got those little teenage, you know, pictures, which I like that. You know, I mean, you're still young right there, you know. And, but they say important pictures are on refrigerators. Is God on your refrigerator? Is Scripture on your refrigerator? Is We'd go to my uh, sister-in-law's house there in Kentucky, and, and, uh, uh, and we would visit. And you'd go in the bathroom, there's Scriptures everywhere little sticky notes. 
she'd take a scripture and she'd put it in there. You might go in another room and it's just, uh, uh, just, just, just sticking somewhere on a wall. And I thought about that. Where's God? Where's his word? Is it out there somewhere? Just a reminder of, of his presence. And so we got to seek those things. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Our humanity calls us to settle for second best. Our humanity, our flesh, causes us to, to settle for second best. Most of us live beneath our potential. And I'm talking about in the spiritual ranks. I'm talking about in the physical, too. When God, God wants millionaires in this church. I'll say it again. God wants millionaires in this church. You say, how could I ever be a millionaire? Put God first. I, I know millionaires in other churches. And, and, and you say, Brother Dave, why are you bringing up millionaires? Well, because... God has blessed them. They'll look you in the eye and they'll tell you, I, I became a millionaire because I sought the kingdom of God first. I, I've always said, I said, God, if I, if I was a millionaire, I'd be broke probably in no time because I have such a tender heart. I'd want to give a missionary a brand new car. I, I, I'd want to help a poor church because, you know, I know, I know we struggle. We, we, we've been there before. You'd want to help somebody, wouldn't you? You'd want to give somebody something. And so... But, but we, we live beneath our potential. God wants, our, our problem with, with living for God is we say, well, God don't, he don't want that. You know, he said the rich man can't, it'd be hard for a rich man uh, to, to enter the kingdom of God. No, God wants to bless you. He wants, he wants you to flourish. He wants you to have the best car. He wants you to have the best clothes. He wants you to have the best house. But you know what? It's only going to happen when you keep this place first. Because so many people get those things and forget the house of God. It's those God-sized prayers. Somebody got on their knees and said, God, I'm going to give this job to you. I'm going to give this career to you. Uh, and it's those type prayers. And I say god size. We size them up. I'm not talking about God's big, but I'm not talking about big prayers. I'm talking about God-sized prayers that he looks at and he says, that's from the heart. That's sincerity, and I believe, Sister Glenda, the prayers we're praying are from the heart, because those are God-sized. That's the ones God should relate to. Well, God, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. God, God, he's not even acknowledging that. That's why I said it's important. When you pray, pray that God's will be done. If I don't want to do that, he might not give it to me. I I remember that lady that came to my dad and said, I'm going to win the lottery, and I'm going to bless your church. Daddy said, it won't happen. And she said, you don't think I can win? He said, no, you'll probably win, but, but I don't think it's going to happen because she said, he said, you can't give anything right now. How are you going to win the lottery and then give something? Uh-oh. <laughs> Go back down the road. You got to learn. You got to start off small. That's another thing that we fail. We got to be careful is we, we, we say, I got to pray an hour. Bless God. If you can't pray five minutes, you're not going to be able to pray an hour. You got to, you got to condition yourself. And so, the, so, so most of us live our lives this way, too far behind to catch up. Anybody feel that way? Anybody feel like you're so far behind you can't catch up sometimes? Uh, the sad part is, is that it's also true with our walk with God. We live far beneath our spiritual potential. Some of you can't consider yourselves doing something great for the kingdom of God. Could I, could I, could I hurt you right here just a little bit? I, I don't want this to be painful, but some of you, 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 you would rather be more uh, successful in the world than you would be successful in the spirit. You can see yourself being greater. Oh, if I could have this job, this career, this social status, these friends. You can see that, but you can't see yourself doing something mighty for God. We got our priorities wrong. You say, Brother Dave, what, what can I? You want me to get up and preach to people and teach? But No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying let God use you. God could use you mightily. And so there's no telling what a witness you could be, what an example you could be. That's like today, when it, where I had to go today, my wife would tell you, I don't want to do this. I don't feel like going over there. I don't feel like going doing this. I, I, I kind of complain. I, first, I pulled a Jonah out today. And, I, and, and, and so riding down the road, uh, here I am thinking, why have I got this? It's pouring down rain, and, and then I'm getting texts saying, we got, we got to make sure we turn this in tomorrow. And I'm like, 
I got I to gotta focus on church now. Let me get here, get this out. And then when I got there and all that stuff started happening, I said, sorry, Lord, I see what you're trying to do. He was putting me in path where, see, God's going to put you in a place where it's those God-sized prayers. See, it's the prayers that I prayed a while back when I said, God, let me be in your will. Okay, this is what's going to happen then. On Wednesday, April the 14th, you're going to go here. I didn't see that two weeks ago. I just complained about having to go and do this and take care of something. And then when I did that, I ran into all the people, and I walked out and said, Forgive me, Lord. I see what you're trying to do. Okay? Thank the Lord he didn't put me in the bottom of a well, you know, because then I'd be praying to get out of that. You know, we put ourselves in our own situations, don't we? Amen. God has promised us so much, yet we don't seem to claim all he offers us. It's evident in our faith and our walk with God, but it's evident in our prayer life. Now, recently, I have been compelled to pray more. Anybody, have you felt through this series or just through wanting to move up in the Lord, have you felt compelled to want to pray more? To pray more often, to pray longer, to be more consistent, and to pray without ceasing. Now, I've noticed something in my prayer life. I pray for the same things over and over again, and sometimes without results. And we should pray often. We should pray uh, uh, longer. My message thought tonight is praying God-sized prayers. I want to teach you about praying more in the sense of praying bigger. Not that God is bigger, but we need to be bigger so that we can get to where God's at. Why is a, what is a big prayer? Big prayers, when I say big prayer, I'm not talking about, okay, I, I be, last week I went an hour and 20 minutes instead of an hour. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about heartfelt prayer, down-to-business prayer. I'm talking about serious prayer. I'm talking about if you don't pray for this, something bad's going to happen, prayer, you know. Can we not see that if we don't pray for our family, they're going to be lost? If we don't pray for this world and community, they're going to be lost. That's heartfelt prayer. We need to get down to business and get heartfelt about it, Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I challenge you. I, I want to teach about praying prayers that will break out of that parade or celebration of predictability. I'm praying that we get out of the predictable state. I want the unpredictable, amen? I, I want coming in here and, and not knowing, it, you know, it, it's nice to go somewhere if you got to speak or if you got to go and, uh, well, when you go and teach, you got to know what you're doing, Sister Robin. If not, you know, it's going to fall apart. But when it comes to, to God and his house and coming here, I want the unknown. I want the unpredictable. I want the out of the ordinary. I, I, I want God. In other words, I don't care uh, what I got planned. God, just tear it all to pieces. Do what you want to do. We may come in here Sunday, and it's like, I got a beautiful message I want to preach to you. But God may say, yeah, but I got something. I, I want to have a healing service today. I, I want to have a shouting service today. I, I, I want to have just a crying service today. I, I want to do something different today. That's what I'm praying. A God-sized prayer is, God, whatever you want to do. I don't care what you want to do. I, there, there was an old Disney movie. I'm trying to think of which one it was with the two, what, were the, what was the two animals? They looked, one said, what you want to do? I don't know what you want to do. I don't know. Let's do something. All right, what do you want to do? And they just back and forth said that over and over and over and over. I thought about it. God, what do you want to do? He's not going to say, no, what do you want to do? He's going to say, okay, this is what I want to do. Right. Now, I'm going to get in trouble right here. But Sister Chloe, she'll play with a little girl sometime, and there's always one little girl. Uh, that across the street, they was over there. They didn't know I was listening, but there's three little girls, and they was out there playing and stuff. And they were sitting there having a good old time. Boy, she's listening. I got her attention. She's paying attention now. She said, preach, Daddy. You know. But anyway... I heard one of the little girls, and I don't think it was her. It may have been a little bitty girl, a little tiny little girl. She said, I want to be the boss. Anybody know those little girls like that? I want to be the boss. I'm like, what is the boss? Well, they, all right, you do this, and you do that. They tell everybody what to do. Our problem is we try to be the boss. We want to tell God what to do. I've heard people pray, well, God, I want you to do this, and I want you to do it this way, and God... And God's like, that's not the way I do things around here. I'm the boss. <laughs> Amen. And so, anyway, uh, we have to let God be in control. When you pray, 
give it to God and say, God, I want you in control. This is what I, God, this is what I want, but it's got to be what you want. God, I'd like to see just my family saved. I'd like to see 10 of them walk in. God, I'm going to claim it in Jesus' name. I want 10 of them to walk in and sit on that front pew Sunday. In Jesus' name. God might be okay. Uh, If that's his will and you got the faith that's going to happen, it can happen. Okay? But if you walk in and they're not, nobody shows up, you still praise God anyway. You still claim that seat and believe and you, you pray and you see them sitting there. Well, they're not there. See, God sized prayers means you see what's not there. God sized prayers is the faith that is going to happen when it don't when others don't think it's going to happen. Amen. You, if you got family, I know you do, so I'm not going to ask you. I know you got family that need to be in here, need to be saved. Uh, what you need to do is you need to just, well, they're here. They're here because I've claimed them. It's just a matter of time. Amen. And so we, we got to have those type, God sized prayers are those heartfelt prayers. And so I don't want to settle for second best, even in my walk with God. Amen. I don't want VAC to settle for something less than what God desires. Amen. And so I don't want you to fall short of God's plan for you in your walk with Him. I desire uh, for each person to reach your full potential in the Lord. You have something that you can do for the kingdom of God. There should be nobody in, in this place tonight that could say the words, I don't know what I can really do for God. Don't let the devil tell you that. Because there is something that you can do for the kingdom of God. Amen. And so I desire for you to have full potential. God to use you. God, God's size. God's measurement. Now, when you let man measure, that's a problem. But when you let God measure, it's, imme- it's something that's it's infinite. It's something that God, you can't even measure the depths, the height, the width of God. Amen. Something that is heartfelt. You got to get your heart in this. You ever heard of sports guys? Man, what's wrong with you? You can play better than that. Get your heart in this. Because when you get your heart in it, you're getting serious about it. Okay? And so you got to get your heart in this. And the spiritual sense, you got to get your heart right. Amen. I've caught myself this week getting a little upset and aggravated with some things. And the Lord just be like, don't, don't, get, don't get upset, don't fret, don't worry, just trust in me. You know, and you just have to, you, you want to go just knock some spiritual sense into somebody, don't, or just any sense, don't you, sometimes. But God's like, no, I'll take care of them. And we don't pray those prayers, God, knock them out in Jesus' name. We don't pray prayers like that. God, he can handle any situation. My wife is a witness of this. We had such a tough week, a lot of stuff going on, and, um, uh, I don't know if any of y'all's got into, um, they, they have this thing that's out. It, it's it's kind of like the passion. I call it like the passion of Jesus Christ when he walked the earth, went to the cross. And uh, they've had a bunch of these. Usually they show them Easter time, but they got a new series. It's called The Chosen. Some of you probably heard of it. Millions of people have been watching. Brother Cameron's been into it, and we love to watch. And it's right in with the Bible. And uh, we've been watching these, and it talks about Jesus walking on the earth, and he's got his disciples and all of that. And, uh, and, and, and I just, it's, been, it's just been really a tough week. And, and, and last night, uh, Brother Cameron said, Daddy, I think the Chosen comes on tonight. I want to watch it. It's something about the, Jesus and the disciples. And so I said, we'll sit down and watch it. And I sat down, and I was just tired. And I was like, Lord, it's been just a tough week. And all of a sudden, ding, I looked. And I looked on there, and my wife was a witness. It was a preacher friend of mine. He said, God laid on my heart to tell you to hang on, that God's in control. He loves your family. Keep doing what you're doing and let God just take control. And, and boy, I got excited. And boy, when I watched that, I know there was a man portraying Jesus and I know that they were doing But I just had to look at that and say, that's my God. God, is he's looking out for me. He's watching out for me. He, he's, and so I thought about that. See, I don't know how, I don't know how you challenge yourself with God. When I pray, I don't pray. I used to pray. Brother Bernard, I used to pray, God, send me a sign, send me a wonder. And my grandpa chewed me out. He said, you don't pray like that. We don't pray for signs and wonders. I need a sign. You know, you know the song or what was the comedian said, here's your sign. I was always looking for a sign. 
God, if that, I, I was like uh, Gideon. Remember Gideon in the Bible? God called him and said, I want you to lead these people. Well, God, if it's you, uh, I want the, the, the cloth, uh, the lint, uh, when, I, when it's out on the ground, if the dew is on it and not on the cloth, then I know it's you. And they got the next day, and it was just what he prayed. And then he questioned God again and said, well, well let's do it again. Well, if it's, if it's not any dew, but it's on the cloth, then I'll know it's you. He began to, to put signs and what, and God did it. And then he finally, he said, well, you know, I guess this is you. I guess I'll do what you want. That's not what God wants us to do. But I do pray and say, God, I do need just a little turn the headlights on so I can see driving sometimes. And so when I got that little ding, I knew, I said, because I said, God, I just want to be in your way. I want to do the right thing. I want to have a good attitude. And I was praying about something to do the right thing and, 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 and a situation, and, 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 I, and, and, and I, it happened. And I said, thank you, God, because it's just like God turning. Hey, he said, you, you got your headlights on. You can drive now. That's what a God-sized prayer is. When you're heartfelt and you're praying and talking to God, you can actually see things in the dark with your lights on. Try drive. Well, don't, don't try driving without your lights, okay? Don't do that. Put, turn your lights on, you know. I got tickled the other day, and I'm getting ready to close. Uh, we were standing out there, and Brother Everett and uh, that family was standing out there, and uh, the little boy... He was standing out there, and Brother Red, he, had, he, he, uh, he pulled out Brother Adam, and I couldn't see nothing except his, uh, uh, you know, his, his vehicle out there. And um, he, he was out there, and, and they, were, they were getting ready to take off, and uh, I, I couldn't see. I heard Brother Adam. He told Brother Adam, he said, now, look, he said, we'll see you at midnight. And I was like, Midnight? And he had, the, he had the girls, they were riding in his little car, his little vehicle out there. And uh, they took off. And, uh, and so that young man, he was standing there, and, and uh, Brother Everest is like, you're next. When he gets back, he'll take you for a ride. I'm not riding that thing. No, no. And, he, and, and of course, they were just standing there, and they were gone for a few minutes. And the whole time, he was like, All right, let's go. He, was ready, he wasn't ready to go, but then he was ready to go. He was getting kind of worried, you know. And so... Anyway, they finally got in their van and drove off, and Brother Red pulled up, and he said, Where, where's he at? Where's the next one's at? You know? And so he, he got out of there. And I thought about that's the way we are with life situations. We want to run and get out of there when we need to just buckle up, get in there. And, and I was trying to tell him, I said, hey, those little girls, they got in that slingshot and took off and rode. Boy, they didn't bother. They, they were, wee, you know. We need to buckle up. And just get a hold to God, pray, get in that heartfelt moment, and just ride this thing out. Amen. Can you give the Lord a praise? Amen. The Apostle Paul felt this way. And uh, he said in Ephesians 3 and 8 through 9, And to me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ? And to make all men see what is fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. He was writing to these Christians, here I am the least of all. And he was talking and preaching. He, he was basically saying, I'm in over my head. These people don't even want to respond or listen. And Paul said, I, I'm called to preach the unsearchable. These people, how, how can I, you can't, Paul, now look, Paul had a problem. In today's day and age, it's hard to preach people because they don't want to listen. Paul said, I'm having trouble preaching this gospel. And I got to looking at it and studying, and I said, why is he having trouble preaching the gospel? He said, because it's so rich and deep and unsearchable, I don't know where to begin because God's so mighty and great. It's hard to preach to you what God is trying to say in his word that he wants to do for you because you can't even comprehend it. Our little bitty minds can't. I got this down, don't I? comprehend what God wants to do. If you could really see what God wants to do with you, it might blow your mind. Oh, what would he want to do with me? I'm a sorry, good for nothing. Nah, that's your first problem right there. You need to get over that. You are somebody because God made you. Amen. God, he was over his head, but God was using him to preach the riches, the riches of glory, the riches. We're dealing with stuff that's way over our head today. Could I tell you we're living in a day? Look, last year, Brother David had to learn how to pray. 
I had to learn how to preach again. You say, Brother Dave, what do you mean? You didn't, because you didn't come and we, we were preaching online. No, I, I, had to learn, I had to adapt to what we were facing. We were dealing with bigger demons, bigger devils, big, the bigger stuff going on in the world. So in order to do that, I had to have some God-sized prayers. Some preachers got it all wrong. They got to have a God-sized sermon, but you better have a God-sized prayer and a God-sized faith and a God-sized walk to back up that God-sized sermon. Amen. I'm telling you, I did. I admit it. I had to learn some things last year because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't. I, I didn't go out in public, but my Lord, I was scared. I, I didn't know whether to shake your hand. I didn't know whether to, 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 to back up and holler 10 feet away. I didn't know whether to throw a rock with a message to you. Or, or I was afraid maybe if I text you or call and you text me back, I might get the virus. I didn't know what to think. Did you, did you feel that way? It had a man, one, one of those guys at the school, he's like, oh, it wasn't no big deal. He told me, he said, preacher, I was lying. He said, I was lying to you. He said, it was a big deal. I don't know what was going on. He said, I was about to go crazy. He said, all I know, I was locked up in a house with a bunch of crazy kids for about five months, four months, and I was about to go crazy. We all had to learn some things. But you know what? Nothing changed with God. Amen. If it should have done anything, it should have built up our faith and knowledge that God is greater than the situation and he's greater than the circumstance. Would you stand? Paul said that his abilities and the things of God were immeasurable. Amen. Start praying God-sized prayers. I'm talking about heartfelt. What do you mean by that? Be serious. Talk to God. You, you don't have to say things. He, he fancy. He, he condemned and criticized uh, those who, who repeated and said prayers that were repetitious. He, he, you, know, God, you know, God just wants you to be honest, sincere, and humble. You, you may say, well, Brother David's got it all together. He's a preacher. He, he's behind the pulpit preaching. He probably got a wonderful little prayer life. No, I'm still learning how to pray. And, and you may say, I don't, I, I'm nothing. I, who am I? I, I you, you may not even have uh, the Lord in your life like you feel like you need to have, and you don't feel that you can talk to God. You can talk to God. Anybody can talk to God. You can have a prayer life. I've told you in the beginning that the, the best way to, uh, to, to, to have a good prayer life is to just start one. Just start today. Start talking to God. And, and so uh, uh, we got we to gotta have heartfelt prayer. And this, this is how we need to pray. Some of you are barely making it. Some of you are just kind of squeaking by. Some of you are just managing, just are you in the hold on mode. I'm just holding on, just hanging in there. And so you're just settling for second best. God is just telling you to seek him, put him first. And God wants to take you to new heights and depths. First of all, you've got to believe that you can be something better. You've got to believe that you can do something greater. God is waiting for you to do the impossible that he says you can do. Not what man, man may say, you can't do nothing, man. You can't, you. But God is saying, yes, you can. Because I am in the business of making possible things and making you something that so you can reach everybody say I can do this I can reach the unreachable say that I can reach the unreachable oh lord this is like my first hour class on Monday morning you can reach say I can reach the unreachable that means the things of God and it means those that you don't think would ever come to the house of God the unreachable okay you can know the unknowable. Say, I can know the unknowable. Did you know that with the power of God on the inside of you, that there's no man or thing or, that could do you harm? You can know things that other people don't know. You say, well, how do I, how's that? Through God's wisdom and through the Holy Ghost, it will lead you and guide you and direct you in your life. And you could attain... The unthankable. Say, I can attain the unthinkable. I can get what people don't even believe or think that I can, or even myself, what I can do. Amen. The key is praying heartfelt prayers. And here's how you do it. Take that word out. I told that man today, tell her to get her Bible out and start reading. And start, just, just say, God, you said in your word, I'm reading right here, it says this. And God, I pray that if this is what you said in your word, 
that it's good for me. That's a heartfelt prayer. That's believing God's word. That's trusting God's word. Amen. I like that story, Joshua, when he said, he, he loved God and he said, God, you promised me a battle. You promised me a victory. And they were fighting the enemies. Remember that story? And, 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 and all of a sudden, he began to pray and, and he said, God, God said, take them. They're yours. And they began to fight and they were whipping them. They were destroying the enemies. They were, they were tearing them up. They were winning. Everybody said they were winning. And then guess what? The sun started to go down. And he said, wait a minute. The, the guys were like, oh, no, we, 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 we have to go and camp. And the, and, and the enemy was like, thank you. We can go uh, recover, the, and we can get back uh, to, to fighting tomorrow, and we can maybe even re regroup and get some more men. And Joshua said, God, and it was a heartfelt prayer, God-sized prayer. He said, God, he said, you promised me this battle. You said that we would win. And God, the enemy is going back to reload. And say, God, I'm going to ask this that you would allow the sun uh, to just stay out. Don't let the darkness, don't let night come. And the Bible says that he allowed uh, the sun and the moon to stand still. The sun didn't go down. It stayed right where it was at. Then we had to be like, what's going on? It's time for it to get dark and for them to leave us alone. But he allowed the sun uh, to be still. And Joshua defeated the enemy, wiped them out. You know why? Because he had a God-sized prayer, a heartfelt prayer. Somebody in what you're going through, when, you, when the devil says, that's not going to happen. Sister Glenda, when, when the enemy's trying to say, it's not going to happen with that baby. Well, look what Joshua did. He stopped the sun and the moon. If a man can pray to God and stop the sun and the moon, why can't he heal a child? Why can't he bring your family to the house of God? Why can't he heal your body? I have an opportunity to reach people that I went to school with, that when I walked the halls, they never would listen to me. But now they're asking for prayer, and I can pray a God-sized prayer, and God can heal them, and they can walk through those doors and say, you know what, you were right. Woo, I got to quit now, because, boy, I'm starting to feel it now, boy. Praise God. Go home and pray a God-sized prayer. Hey, don't you tell me. Don't you tell me that I, that, that I can't pray a storm away because I'm already 2-0, and o, baby. <laughs> Are you taking all the credit? No, God gets all the credit. Yes, but there were two storms headed this way, and a lady came to my room and said, Pastor, I, we can't have that. I got this. Something's going on. They were doing something on their house. And I said, well, let's pray together. Let's bind together. And she come back and said, boy, I'm going to come over here and get every time. I said, no, wait a minute. That's not the way God works. He may not do it the third time. I said, but we'll keep on believing. And the weatherman's probably sitting there. How'd that happen? You know, I'm telling you. I, you say, Brother Dave, what are you saying? I've got so much faith that I believe that you could ask God to calm the storm and a God-sized prayer with a man's faith, he can do it. And if somebody don't believe it, so be it. I believe it because I've received it before. When you've received it, you'll believe it. Amen. He's done it time and time again. Amen. Somebody just wave your hands to the Lord. Can you praise him just a moment? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Praise God. I feel the presence of the Lord. Hey, look, pray. Look at your neighbor. Turn around and look at somebody and say, pray. Point them out and say, pray. Pray a God-sized prayer. Amen.